All right guys, so today I wanna to take a break from my interior. I'm waiting for two more pieces. If you guys follow my Instagram, at the Craig 909 uh, I actually did a live video talking to you guys, kinda of updating you guys on what's going on. And I had not done work to my truck because I'm waiting on two defroster hoses. That was the only thing I'm waiting on. Uh, that will allow me to put the whole truck back together because I can put the heater box back in, stuff like that. Those hoses didn't show up, so I wasn't able to finish my truck, so I wasn't able to finish the video for you guys. So. In the meantime, to kind of do something for you guys that you guys might enjoy, um, I'm here with my buddy Xavier doing a clutch in his 65 F100. So uh, I put a pull up on Instagram. Uh, I do that a lot, so if you guys want to check stuff like that out, uh, I'll leave a link. You guys can do that in the description. Uh, but I put a pull up asking you guys if you guys wanted to see it. 96% uh, of you guys said you wanted to see this, so I thought I'd film it. So this is, we go to school together. This is my buddy's 65 F100. Uh, I like it. It's pretty nice. I like the color. I like the patina too. There's like no rust in this entire truck either. So I think he said there's a couple holes in the bed somewhere. I don't even, oh there's one right there. That's it. But roof's perfect. Everything else is fine. Door jams are good. Oh, well, I'm not gonna open that because the jack's right there. But yeah, everything's pretty good. I skipped all the boring stuff. So we've got rear drive shaft, two piece drive shaft, rear excess front section. That's off. We're degreasing the actual cross member. It's full of junk. So getting ready to actually pull the tranny out. And yeah, this is a three speed. We're doing a clutch. So I thought I would show all this. Transmission, you can see it's up there. Getting ready to be pulled out. Two piece drive shaft separated. Uh, we're about to take the shifter off. This is a three speed. I think it was a three, it, based on the little, I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys can see the, uh, the little hole right there. Uh, I think this was a three on the tree and someone moved it to the floor. So we're gonna unhook the shifter linkage so it's actually, you know, we can get it off. So once we take the shifter off, it'll allow us to uh, get the extra training out. So that's the only thing that needs to come out. We're gonna take that out and then we're gonna start lowering the transmission and get it out and get onto the clutch. Set those aside and we'll pull those bitch out. Yeah, I see your shifters down here now? Yeah. So now it's not even in the carpet. Yeah, see that? Yeah. So now we'll just be able to pop it back. And as I pull it back, you'll lower the jack. So you can put those bolts in if you want real quick. All right, we will get this thing out. I want to make sure that you guys can see it. So I'm just going to leave the frame right here. Okay. This is the most fun part of this whole thing. See if I didn't kill myself. I don't watch that there. So probably I'm landing on it. I'll just adjust the clutch rod. We'll get some slack that way. And it'll come out. Oh, there it goes. You can see it? It's popped off. Uh, okay, so we are free. Okay, don't worry yet. What do you have to move the money maker? Yeah, pretty much. Well, oh, nah, that's fine. Lower it? Yeah, very slowly. Okay, tight up, there you go, perfect, just like that. And there you go. Now just pull it towards you. Got it? Oh, look how easy that is. Oh, sh I was wrong. Your clutch has been replaced. It has? Yeah, someone's replaced it. Hmm. I thought for sure that was gonna be the original clutch. Dang, that was the easiest removal I've ever done. <laughs> Oh, so much easier than mine. Mine was a. We did it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take my gloves off so you guys see this. The main reason I wanted to film all this is because I have a nice camera now, and it does good in low, lower light, so you guys can actually see. I thought for sure this was gonna be the original clutch, but what tells me it's not is you can see it's got multiple teeth, multiple fins. Uh, that tells me it's been replaced because normally it's three teeth, three prongs on your clutch. Um, at least for the Vita ones, and I kind of see like a silver looking clutch disc piece and that tells me it's not original. I don't see any like Fomico stamps or anything like that. Nope. So yeah, that thing definitely looks like it's been replaced. But we're gonna take the bell housing off now, which is really, really heavy. So I'm just gonna buzz that off. You guys don't need to see that. And then uh, I'll come back when we get the clutch. Yeah, I got both of them. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to go up. Alright. 
Clutch, we don't have to take your flywheel off. Yay! Huh. Well, that's weird. This looks fine. Why did this not, why was this slipping? That's weird, because this thing is like, literally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, there's plenty of life left in the clutch. Okay. That's odd. So you gotta put a bolt in, somewhere, tops preferably, probably better. Um, find, a, find a spot, put the bolt in, and just kind of go for it. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, oh wow, I got crap all over my face. I've done this a hundred times, as you guys probably know, with the five-speed thing, I had my transmission in and out, I think six or seven times. So, I'm letting him do it. He's never done it before, so it's always a good chance to learn. Is that what I always want to say, or is that just an excuse because I don't want to work on it? I don't know. But either way, it's on. I kept forgetting, I was like, oh, we're just doing a clutch. So we didn't have to take the flywheel off because I'm in that constant repetitive theme of me doing mine and my flywheel had to keep coming off. This is a lot easier. Doing a clutch is actually a lot easier than you might think if you've never done one. The hardest part is getting the transmission in and out. But we do have that here. The one thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't while he's putting that in is this is our original clutch, which is really, really weird. So as you can see, it's nothing wrong with it. It's got plenty of life. So apparently this was slipping. It does look a little glazed, but I mean, there's, well, not even glazed, it's just shiny. It's fine. It looks like it's literally wearing perfectly fine. I see nothing wrong with this entire clutch, which doesn't really make any sense. Focus, there it goes. I mean, I see nothing wrong with this thing. There's no cracks, no springs are flying out of it. it looks perfectly balanced still. I'm assuming it's clutch adjustment, which we'll have to do. Uh, which isn't really that hard, so I'm gonna adjust the clutch and we'll go drive it around, make sure it doesn't slip anymore. But yeah, there's a lot of things it could be. It's the old Z bar setup. We're gonna get a new throw bearing in there. Maybe the throw bearing was junk. I never thought about that actually. What the heck, the throw bearing is even that bad. I don't really know why I did that. Interesting. All right, guys, I'm back home. Uh, it's incredibly late now. Uh, I'm just gonna update you guys real quick on what happened. So, got everything back together, broke two bolts off in the flywheel, used a reverse drill bit to get one of them out, broke that off inside the bolt, inside the flywheel. Kind of sums up our situation. Spent five hours getting everything out, retapping everything, getting it straight. And anyways, everything's back together, clutch is on, flywheel's back on, everything's torqued, sealed. Bell housing's back on, transmission's ready to go back in. We're gonna pick it up back in the morning. I'll see you guys in the daylight. All right, we're, uh, we're back working on this. We're just gonna get the transmission in really quick. Bell housing is on, Xavier's putting the starter on real quick, and then just gotta pop the transmission in, dry shaft, we're done. So yeah, like I was saying, we got two bolts stuck in the starter, or no, flywheel, broke off. Use a reverse drill bit to get one of those out, and the reverse drill bit, as you loosen it, kind of gets tighter and tighter, and then that broke too. So it was a nightmare trying to get this thing out. Um, but regardless, besides the point, we got everything tapped, redone, it's perfectly smooth, flywheel torqued on perfectly, so did the clutch, everything is perfectly put on now. We have the clutch fork in with throttle bearing on, and Xavier, like I said, is putting the starter in. Once the starter's in, we can just pop the transmission in, four volts on that, get the cross member on, put the shifter on, clutch on, clutch Z-bar linkage back on the clutch, and uh, we're good to go. So this is actually a pretty easy job, it just kind of turned into something that was not easy because bolts didn't like to cooperate, let's just put it that way. So. Uh, you can see the transmissions right there, and we're gonna get this thing in. So I'm gonna put the camera up, and we'll get this thing in the truck. People, when they hurt, I don't like to hurt people. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, look at that! Did you see that? It just snapped in completely, like it's flush with the bell housing. Oh, nice. Why is this so much easier than a five-speed? What the hell? All right, well, this is easy. You can go and grab a bolt and put it in. It's literally all the way in now. 
All right, and it's finished. Look at that, we got it all back together. Uh, you guys have probably seen a lot of the stuff with the five speed, and if you want more in depth clutch stuff, watch my five speed videos or on my channel. Um, but we did get everything together. So he's gonna start it and try to move it. I just lightly adjusted the clutch to where I think it'll work. Where that's the reason we're driving is I need to make sure the clutch is functioning properly. Is it on? Is it on? <laughs> Does it normally run like that? Starting like that. Yeah. Cool. And yep. on the, uh, the other side. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, dude, you cut in my car. What the hell? What's up with that? Ah, freaking tin can looking freaking. Ah, what's up with that, man? Hey, look at that. It works. Oh, go drive it up and down the street and tell me if it feels good or not. So this is a, I don't know if it's a 300 this year. I'm pretty sure it's, this actually is a 300, I think. I don't know, we'll see if uh, I did a good job adjusting it. Oh, good looking truck. <laughs> so we had a long this was ridiculously difficult for us but shouldn't be for you if you need to do your clutch it's actually not that hard just use common sense and you can do it uh this is the second or third one i've done and it went really smoothly besides the bolts breaking off that should not happen so don't plan for bolts to break just don't over torque and don't cross thread then you'll be fine i was expecting you to come down the hill how, how to drive Way better? Yeah. Really? Like way better. Oh, okay. Good. Alrighty then. In that case, well, here, I'll just go up the street with you. So it grabs pretty far down low? Yeah. Is that where you want it? Yeah. Okay. Because the whole point is the, if it grabs lower, you don't really necessarily want it to like grab at the very, very top because then the clutch will slip. But if it's down at the bottom, then we know it's fully disengaging mm -hmm. or fully engaging. And then uh, it seems like everything works. But yeah, it definitely grips pretty good. I think it's a lot of torque for an inline, but then again, it is an inline, so that makes sense. It's cool. That sounds new, though. It's probably just everything breaking in. That sounds like throw out bearing. almost motor related. Let me see if I put the clutch in if it goes away. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah. Okay, so I need to, that's what it is. Cause like the clutch, I feel it all the way, way down here. And there's all this slack. I think I need to bring a little bit of that slack out. So I think I need to adjust a little bit. It seems like it wants to go into gear now, but I will get this thing readjusted. Okay, so as you can probably hear, there's no clattering noise. So I'm pretty sure it's cause the clutch was too loose. There was too much slack in play. And so it was Rubber and kind of clattering against the fins on the clutch. So I tightened up the clutch, now we're good. So as you can see, there's no feeling. It probably might engage at a little bit of a different spot. But does it feel relatively the same? Yeah. Cool. I'll kind of look to see. So it's a little high. That's engaged. Okay, yeah, that's where you want it to be. Nice. drives good. That's really good. Goes right into gear now? Yeah. Nice. 
Try for third, see if it goes into third. Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry, my bad. I don't know, I'm all over the place. Five speed thirds up here, so I'm like, God. <laughs> he did a gas tank. <laughs> yeah, I remember mine does that too. Whoa! <laughs> there it is. Get oh, it. Is, it. is it not one of the go? I think that's Lincoln. Try going over really, really hard. Now it'll go in gear. Hopefully. That's no, fine, huh? I think that's linkage. Because the clutch is obviously adjusted fine. I gave it more opening, so the clutch is technically disengaging more, which means it should be easier to put in gear. It is, it might have been the problem the whole time. <laughs> I don't know. It's a win. It's a win in my book. See, we did it. <laughs> we took something apart and we put it back together. It took us a little longer than it should have, but it actually still works. That's always a plus. We put something back together and it still works. All right, guys, this is just kind of a filler video between my interior and stuff. Um, and this video was a lot longer than it should have been, but still, regardless, I hope you guys did enjoy. Maybe you found a tip or a trick useful. I don't know. Either way, like the video if you did enjoy it. Let me know anything down in the comments below. A big thank you to my boy Xavier for his truck, everything about it. Oh yeah, before we end the video, you should probably at least show him the motor and like other stuff like that. We haven't even talked about it, I just realized that. <laughs> Six cylinder gang. Heck yeah. It's a 1965 Ford F100, uh, 300 straight six, uh, three speed. And it was a three on the tree that someone converted, as you guys, as I showed earlier. So, it's got the floor shifter now. Seems like it works pretty, pretty decent. And uh, yeah, it's got a pretty bitchin' patina, no rust. First year of twin I-beam, this thing's pretty sweet. But uh, yeah, we might make more videos with this. We'll probably go on like a cruise or something once we have a bunch more. Kind of once Travis has fixed his truck and then Franklin has his. Franklin just had an ACL surgery, so kind of bummed for him. He'll be back, I think, in two months to drive his truck. Can't bet his knee, so he can't get in his truck. My truck's gonna be finished. And then this one, so we'll have four. So we can go on a cruise. So let me know if you guys wanna see something like that. Uh, but yeah, like the video if you did enjoy it, let me know what you do think down in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video with my truck. I'll see you, bye guys.